Thanks. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Regan. Hello, Ruskin. I see you've got the duty again. Well, you've been back there a week. It comes around. Thanks. Dr. Astor. Good night, Regan. Oh, Regan. Regan, I've got to talk to you. I've got a minute now? No. But I want to see you tomorrow morning. I come by your house. 10 o'clock? Fine. What's this? Laboratory equipment replacements. Now, what happened while I was gone? Nothing, sir. Director? Well, you know Dr. Baxter. He's still, uh... Introverted. Yes, sir. Who's left in the E-Lab? Well, there's six. Dr. Baxter, Hoffman, Yang, and three technicians. Correct. Gonna get these inside? Yes, sir. Regan? Hello, Mason. Who's left in there? Six, sir. Dr. Baxter, Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Yang, and three technicians. Dr. Hoffman? Good evening, Regan. Is the director in there? Yes. Working late tonight? No. Well, uh, how was it on the Potomac? Not quiet. I, um... I understand the man has uh, given us a new administrator, Dr. Leonard Michelson. Who told you that? Dr. Hoffman. The uh, cleaning woman told him. Not funny. <laughs> well, it's Friday. Good night, Regan. See you Monday. Good night, Doctor. Trouble? No, sir, just some minor residual. Well, a couple of crates outside, let's get them in. Yes, sir. Raskin just called. Good evening, Doctor. Reagan. Working late? No, but I'll be in tomorrow. What time? Eight. I'll uh, set the time lock for you. Last time you locked yourself out till Monday. I know. You've been away, haven't you? In Washington. How worried are they? Yeah, they're always worried about the security of this place. My job's like that. What they're really worried about is that. Yes, sir. Do you uh, reassure them? No, I leave that to you. Yeah. Sir, do you think? Um, why don't you take this Saturday and Sunday off, Doctor? Do you good? No time for that, Regan. No time. Tired men make mistakes, Doctor. God to help us if a mistake's made here. Night, Doctor.
Night, Mason. Night, Mr. Reagan. Leaving, Doctor? I'll be a few minutes. Do you need me for anything? No. Good night, Hartman. Good night, Doctor Hartman. Good night, Mason. Yes, sir. Regan, I'm going to E-Lab.
shoulder when that back road's caved in. We ought to take care of that tomorrow. All oh, right. Might as well make an order in the law for Mr. Regan in the morning. Well, I'll tell him when he leaves. He's still here? Mm -hmm. He left. What time did he go in there? Mr. Regan? Mr. Regan? Hello, Mr. Regan? Hello, Mr. Regan? Get over there and check that security door. This is Lieutenant Raskin, duty officer, station three. Give me the director, Dr. Baxter, at home. Or Mr. Tasserly. Right. <laughs> Mr. Martin. Yes. Good evening. Good of you to see me at such a late hour, Mr. Barrett. You didn't care for a drink? Oh, no, thank you. You live aboard all the time, Mr. Barrett? No, just some of the time. I don't imagine your law practice is too demanding these days. Could be better. Yet you can afford this yacht. Must be rather expensive. What can I do for you, Mr. Uh, Martin? We have a job for you. We think you're the right man. Oh? Why? You have the background for it. And in the past, you've been quite outspoken on the immorality of war. Everybody says he's against war. Not ex-United States intelligence officers. Let's take a look at some of the record. Lee Barrett, 1950, university student, free law. An active service Korea, helicopters. Detached for special service, excellent war record. Citation, superb lone operator who has no master in cunning, secrecy, or violence. Promoted to captain. Recommended for three decorations. First discordant note. Last two refused. You're quoted as saying that war had aged you so fast you were too old to play with toys. Rather a whimsical statement, Mr. Barrett. You think so? Why did you leave the service? Poor prospects. Discharged 1952. Allowed to resign commission after altercation with a major general. Some people have flat feet. I dislike taking orders under certain circumstances. Yeah. Then you got your law degree, passed the bar examination, but didn't practice. Joined a government agency, fired. A stint with another one, fired for the usual reason. You rate rather high on insubordination. My record is easy to check, Mr. Martin. Make your point. A year ago, you were appointed security chief at Station 3. How do you know about Station 3? 
the most secret chemical warfare establishment in this hemisphere. Fired three months ago. Reason? Emotional rejection of purpose of project. Council for World Peace, Henry Martin, Executive Secretary. You've heard of this? Oh, yes. But you don't approve of this. I don't like semi-secret organizations, Mr. Martin. Neither do I, Mr. Barrett. But the Council is a potent weapon for peace. We're not communistic or anti-communistic. We just want a workable peace. Like you, perhaps, Mr. Barrett. You have been outspoken on the foolishness of war. That was removed from Station 3 a few hours ago. It doesn't matter how at the moment. Do you know what it is? Botulinus? No. A vaccine against botulinus. The contents of that flask can be cultured to provide enough vaccine to immunize any nation on Earth. We want to deliver it delivered to this address. Europe? Yes. How does that help peace? It neutralizes a terrible weapon. If we both have it, well, neither side can threaten the other with it. Very dangerous assignment, Mr. Martin. Ten thousand dollars should uh, cover your expenses. I'm afraid not. Then you refuse? No. It'll cost you twenty thousand. Ten thousand each way. Cash? Now. Do you mind if I say something, Mr. Barrett? Yes, I do. Keep your speeches and moralities for your counsel. This is a business deal. No wonder you were thrown out of so many places. Satisfied? Yes. Put your forearms on the table. You have a strange way of doing business, Mr. Barrett. What is this, a holdup? Put your forearms on the table. First, vaccines are not stored at Station 3, so this has got to be some kind of a virus. Second, no one is supposed to know anything about Station 3. And third, I know quite a bit about the World Peace Organization. There's a fat, balding man who is the secretary named Henry Martin. I know him. What do you intend to do? Turn you over to the right people. I know this is not evidence, but with your fingerprints on the flask and the money, it'll do. I guess I underestimated you. I guess you did. Now stand up. Turn around, put your hands on the bucket and lean on them. Get sore, Barrett. I had to do this in a hurry, and it's the only way I could handle it. Handle what? I had to check you for security. And quick. That character is one of your agents? That's right. And you planned this whole thing just to see if I could be bought? You could put it that way, I guess. I didn't know what kind of a security risk you'd become. People change, you know. You did have me worried on that radio there for a moment. Get out of here. Get your tail back to Washington. Mr. Barrett, I'm Dr. Leonard Michaels. I know who you are, you two. Get out! Get your props and get off this boat. Barrett, you know the way our security agency works. Mr. Barrett, I can understand how you might interpret this as a reflection of your loyalty. Sir. Barrett. Barrett, the general has asked that we come to you. He wants you in on this. In on what? Station 3 was broken into a few hours ago. Regan's been murdered. And Dr. Baxter has vanished. Deputy Administrator here. Mr. Tassily? Lieutenant Raskin. Lieutenant Johnson. Good morning. Very sorry about this, sir. No sooner take over. Yes, Tassily. Do you know Mr. Cavanaugh? Yes, I do. Mr. Barrett? Hello, Barrett. Anything on Baxter? Nothing. Nothing. The net's out. All points. 
What steps have you taken? None, really. I figured you'd get here pretty fast. So I've touched nothing, talked to no one. I did bring in all the security people who were on duty last night. Whom have you told about this, Mr. Tassily? Well, no one other than you people. And our security men, of course. And Dr. Hopman. Why him? Well, he was the last one out, except for the director. He's waiting in E-block now. Let's take a look at Regan. You with us, Bert? I'll be there in a minute. How do you see this, Johnson? Well, Mr. Tassily says and Mason swears that nobody got into E Lab. But I don't think Reagan committed suicide in there. Neither do I. What's the sentry dog doing over here? He's got a lump on his head that wasn't there yesterday. But he was still on patrol this morning. Mm -hmm. I think maybe he might have been knocked cold for a while. But of course, being a dog, he couldn't tell me about it. He just went back to work. Yeah. Has Raskin got men going over the fence? Every inch. Right in that corner, sir. Dr. Hoffman's terribly distraught, insists he must talk to you. Immediately in private. Perhaps you should see him, sir. Dr. Hoffman? This is Dr. Mike. How was it done? Blow on the head. No weapon. Who set the time lock? I don't know, sir. I suppose Dr. Baxter. Another half an hour to go. Is there any way to work that combination and go in before the time is up? We've got to find out if anything has happened in there. No way on earth until those red lights go off at 8 o'clock. Do you fool with that door before that? Or you die quick. It's booby trapped. Thousand volt charge and lethal gas. Mr. Raskin? Yes. We found a break in the fence. Don't touch it. We'll be right there. Yes, sir. Raskin, have your men move Regan's body to one of those side laboratories. Yes, sir. Taped. So that you can't even see it unless you look closely. Very careful job. Raskin, open the other side. Cut left to right. Right-handed man, maybe. Or a left-handed man who wants us to think he's right-handed. Maybe. Well, the alarm didn't go off. The wire hasn't been touched anywhere. Someone would really have to know their way around this place not to trip over this at night. The thing I don't understand is how anybody can get past the dog. I don't get that either. What do you think happened? I don't know, sir. What's his name? Rollo. Can I handle him? Yeah, he's under sedation. Go ahead. Easy, Rollo. Easy, boy. Easy, Rollo. Easy. There it is. What do you make of that? Oh. Those are cuts. How'd they get there? From the wire. Right. Raskin, you be Rolo. Now you tape up your arm. Stick it through, thus. Okay, grab it. You hang up Rolo on the wire so he can't pull free without tearing his throat out. You make a noise. No, these dogs are trained not to bark, no matter what, right? Right. Now you clobber him with something heavy, you tape up the wire, and you're gone. When Rolo comes to, he's got the world's most massive headache. But being a dog, he can't tell anybody, so he just goes back to work. Simple. So that's how he got in? No, that's how he got out. Out? Right. Look at the ends of these wires where they bent. He took Rolo from the inside. Mr. Barrett, telegram for you. It came to our office in town. How come you get a telegram here? Magic. I'd certainly like to know what it says. I'll bet you would. Mr. Kavanaugh, it's 10 minutes to 8. I know it is an outside possibility, but it is a possibility and a horrible one. If you cannot just kick it under the rug, you, you have not the right. What is it? 
Well, we have a very difficult situation here. Dr. Hoffman feels that E-Lab should be sealed in concrete. Why? Because he is afraid that some chemicals in that vault may have been broken or tampered with. Even if they weren't, we still cannot take the chance. The possibilities are too monstrous to gamble with. What possibilities? I think you better tell them, Doctor. More than 40 biochemical weapons have been developed at Station 3. I will confine myself to two which we have developed here at ELAB. First, botulinus. We have 1,200 grams in six flasks. If 10 grams of it were allowed to contaminate a city, that city is a morgue in four hours. It is an ideal weapon. God forgive the phrase. Because it destroys only people. And it oxidizes itself, in effect, dies, disappears, after eight hours. Well, then it's safe to go in there. It's been over eight hours since that vault door was closed. And if all 1,200 grams of the botulinus was spilled on the floor, it would still be safe. The closed air circulating system is still in operation, so it would be oxidized. That is correct. But there is something else in there. It is only three weeks since Dr. Baxter refined it, and only three days since he communicated its existence to anyone. There's something beyond the botulinus? Yes. The second weapon. Also there is airborne. But self-perpetuating. Indestructible. Once released, it will multiply the power beyond our calculations. It perhaps will never die. To this virus, we have given a highly unscientific name, but one which describes it perfectly. The Satan bug. If I took the flask which contains it and exposed it to the air, everyone here would be dead in a few seconds. California would be a tomb in a few hours. In a week, all life, and I mean all life, would cease in the United States. In two months, two months at the most, the trapper in Alaska, the peasant on the Yangtze, the aborigine in Australia, dead. All dead because I crushed the flask and exposed a green-colored liquid to the air. Nothing, nothing can stop the Satan buck. What would be the last to go? Perhaps a great albatross swinging its way around the bottom of the world. Perhaps an Eskimo deep in the Arctic. But the seas travel the world over, and so do the winds. One day, one day soon, they too would die. The Satan bug is behind that door. One flask. It has got to be locked up. It has got to be. I must make you understand. If Botulinus is spilled, as Mr. Barrett here has just said, then it does not matter. But by God, if someone would get in there, and the Satan bug is spilled, and the vault door opened half an inch and left open, then the airlock room is lethal. Open this door for more than five seconds, and everything that I have told you will happen, will happen. I beg you, sir, seal up the door. You cannot take the risk. I agree. There's nothing else we can do. We've no option. We've no option but to make sure it's in there and untouched. All right, you're all set. Barrett, if that hamster does die, You'll be contaminated. You won't be able to come out of there. I know. Well, I trust your intentions, but if there is something wrong in there, I... Do you wonder if I can go through staying in there? Yes. So do I. Eric, you have your gun? If I come out of that vault with his face mask down, open that airlock door just to crack and use it. It's below atmospheric pressure in there, so the outside air will rush in. You'll have time. You'll be safe. Lee, you know if I have to, I will use this. I know.
There's no danger. Fax is in there. He's dead. There was an accident last month, a technician. No, no, it is all right. It is just the odor now. It is oxidized. What about the Satan bug, Dr. Hoffman? Don't touch the handle, Doctor. We need fingerprints. the flasks. Yes, they're all gone. It can't be gone. It can't be. It's impossible. Baxter walked out last night. He was checked out. He was. Somebody else walked out. Barrett. Oh, yes, Mr. Barrett. You're in suite 15. I am? Yes, sir. You're already registered. I am? You certainly are. Hello, Lee, darling. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. I thought you'd never get here. I've read the newspaper three times and four cups of coffee. I hope you saved one for me. I certainly did. What the hell are you doing here? I'm using a new strategy, darling. I thought you might like the Matahari type. But that telegram, the sooner the better. Can you think of a better way to get you here fast? Well, at least you could have signed it, damn it. You know, your language hasn't improved a bit, by the way. You need a wife's influence. Anne, honey, what are you doing here? Isn't this a beautiful part of the desert? It's marvelous, almost a hideaway. Where is he? About 10 miles from here. Well, who's the cover this time? Me. You. You know, you're not very bright this morning, Lee, darling, and you're certainly not a bit flattering. You and I are spending a quiet little weekend here. Supposedly. Oh. What is it this time, Lee? Not good. Why didn't you say so? I know a darling place out in the desert for lunch. Green pepper burritos and cold Mexican beer. Oi. Good morning, sir. Good to see you again. Hello, Lee. It's good to see you. Sit down. Thank you. That's it for romance today, Lee. I'll get your breakfast. No, that can wait. Sit down, Ann. There's no reason why you shouldn't hear this. It didn't take you long to get here from Washington. No, I'm a member of the Mach 2 Club now. A little over two hours. Now, Ann came ahead of me. I was going to talk to Baxter. We just learned of the Satan bug. Baxter hadn't told you? No, well, not until three days ago. He was quite disturbed. So were all of us. A difficult decision. Didn't know what to do, destroy it or not. Is it gone? Yes, sir, and all the botulinus. And I warned him. You set a project like this in motion, something has to blow. You think Baxter took it? 
No, I found him in the lab. He's dead. Baxter's dead? Somehow two men got into E-Lab yesterday. They must have found Baxter there alone just before closing. One of them threw the flask at him and then shut the vault door. Then he walked out as Baxter. As Baxter? There must have been a reasonable resemblance. And with Baxter's hat and coat, everybody expected to see Baxter. So they saw Baxter. And? The other man went through the fence with the stuff. Regan must have stumbled down them in the lab. Does Cavanaugh have any ideas? None, but he's all over the place with the uh, fingerprint men and cameras. He'll interrogate everything, everybody, but he won't come up with anything that'll be of any value. You agree that it was an inside job? Certainly an inside assist, but too smooth to be caught by fingerprints and conversation. Anyhow, sir, as you know, the how is not important. It's the who and the why that counts. Yes. Lee, have they told you just what this new virus will do? Dr. Hoffman filled me in. It's throwing that bunch of liners that worries me. That's the work of a lunatic. There are three possibilities. Foreign power, possible. Criminals, hijackers, improbable. It's the first and the third that bother me. What's the third? Well, you said it, a lunatic. Well, psychotics don't generally engage in teamwork like this. Paranoids do, and they are very brilliant, some of them. What sort of paranoid? The kind that would grow the most of in this country. A messiah. What kind of messiah? Well, take your pick. Extreme right, the extreme left. From the I'd rather be red than dead fanatics to bomb Moscow right now fanatics. My choice, a messiah. But well, say you're right. What next? Telegram, letter, or something to the papers with the... Uh, mankind must abolish war, or war will abolish mankind. Then they'll make demands and end up with obey or else. Where were you at midnight last night? I beg your pardon? This was delivered about ten minutes ago. Mankind must abolish war, or war will abolish mankind. I have what you're looking for. I order your citadel of the Antichrist destroyed. The president will publicly announce immediate compliance. To prove that I am to be obeyed, there will be an incident unsigned. Carried in. Routine delivery of crates. Carried in. Phony. My God, Mr. Baird, we'd no way of knowing. We had no idea they'd do anything like this. No idea at all. It, it, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. It's always the simple way that works. Nothing? Nothing. Only the fingerprints that belong here. Crates were coated with the right number, the right color, and they were delivered late Friday afternoon. 5.35. No reason for the technicians to open them. Exactly. We're just to see that nothing gets out, sir. Nothing. Everything that comes in stays. Eric. The general's here. He got this this morning. He was phoned in last night. Payphone, Los Angeles Airport. My God. How did they even know he was here? Good question. Well, there's only one thing to do. Rip this whole place apart. Get everybody in here. Everyone else connected with this place. Work them over. Meanwhile, we'll keep the whole area completely sealed off. I think, except for sealing off the area, we should do the exact opposite. What do you mean? Everybody here at E-Lab knows exactly what happened. Certainly whoever took the bugs, no. But nobody outside knows anything yet. Keep it that way. Leave it wide open. Why? So we don't force anybody underground. Eric. There's got to be at least an inside assist from someone here, Station 3. Whoever it is, let's keep them in the dark. Let's hope they make a move, and if they do, we'll know it. Maybe the break we're looking for. Pretty dangerous, Lee. A lot of ways to make a slip. You know how long it'll take to interrogate everybody. Cross-check stories and run down leads. We're under a time gun. You cannot conduct this like a normal investigation. We've got to hope that somebody, somehow, will lead us to the bugs. Only the flasks are important. Nothing else. What do we say about Baxter? Tell him nothing. What about this? It doesn't exist. I'll give the word to Raskin. Raskin.
Anything, Mr. Barrett? Mr. Cavanaugh will be in in a moment. It was a very brave thing you did, Mr. Barrett, to go into that boat. Maybe I knew there wasn't any risk. How could you know that? Well, certainly whoever planned this had accurate information, very accurate information. Like me, you mean? That put me at the top of the list. Why would you steal a Satan bug, Mr. Barrett? Possession gives one limitless power. Military power? And political power and limitless wealth. The Satan bug could make one God on Earth or the devil, if you please. Isn't that enough to tempt anyone? Dr. Hoffman, how long will it take us to develop a vaccine against the Satan bug? Well, as a scientist, I cannot say never, but uh, Dr. Baxter was not getting anywhere. None of us were. Tazzily, institute a crash program. Now. Yes, sir. Sir, except for those present, we're taking the official position that nothing is missing. There's been a murder, that's all. We say nothing to anyone. A murder? What about Dr. Baxter? There's a dead body in there. It'll keep till Monday. Dr. Baxter is just missing. Meanwhile, of course, we'll proceed with the investigation. How? In the usual way. But what are we supposed to do? What do you propose, Mr. Tassily? I think I will stay here at Station 3, if you do not object. I'm, I'm very tired. I do not feel like going home. I'll go with you. Somehow, I... Well, I should like to be on call. I will be in D-wing rest area. Do not hesitate to waken me. Very well. The general is here, Dr. Michelson. All of this is being transmitted to Washington in detail. All right. I'll be in administration with Tassel. Station three personnel? Yes. That telegram. Could there have been a leak? I mean, you don't think it was a phony, do you? It could be a maneuver. The bugs are gone. A lunatic. With the killer of all times. Gives me the creeps. This whole operation gives me the creeps. <laughs> scheduled. How'd you make out? I made out fine. Where's Ainsley? I don't know. When did he get here? He didn't. What do you mean he didn't? I mean he didn't get here. And he didn't call. Did you call him? No, I didn't. Yeah, this is Dr. Oster's house. Oh, I, I'm just the air conditioning man. I'm fixing the unit. Uh, well, he just stepped out. Uh, he said he'd be right back and I'll take a message. Mr. Call who? Uh, Ainsley? How do you spell that? A-N-S? A-I-N-S-L-E-Y. Uh, that's right, Mr. Ainsley. What number?
the hell are you doing here? Usually make a habit of hanging around people's swimming pools? I do when I see that. Yeah, they wiped him out. Could he have been the inside assist? Could be. Cavanaugh Barrett here. I'm at Astra's. He's dead. Well, it's murder to me, but it looks like it could be suicide. He's floating at the bottom of the pool. I'll fill you in on the details later, but more important, see if you can check a call that just came into this number a minute ago. What does the name Ainsley mean to you? Charles Reynolds Ainsley. Uh-huh, that's him. Millionaire crank, right at the top of the list of crackpots. Place in New York, Santa Barbara, and another one, I think, somewhere outside of Phoenix. Nail him. Don't touch him. Don't let him out of your sight, and don't let him know he's being followed. Okay. Now, honey, what are you doing here? I was looking for you. The incident. Florida. Well, it's happened, Lee. He went to Florida about an hour and a half ago. We have... Helicopters in the area, making 16 millimeter films of everything they can see from the air. Meanwhile, the coastline is blocked off, and we're, at the present time, clearing the ocean for 200 miles offshore. How did it happen? Nobody seems to know exactly. One report says there was a small explosion, then everyone downwind started dying. We've closed down all the news media, but we won't be able to keep it quiet for long. What's the attitude in Washington? I would describe it as controlled panic. What do they expect you to do? Find whoever it is. Deal with him. Buy him off, kill him, whatever's necessary. But meanwhile... Yes? Speaking. Oh, are they clear? That bad, huh? When will the film be here? Oh, yes, he's here now. I'll tell him. I'll get back to you as soon as I've seen the film. They have the film on Florida, and they're shipping a print out here right away. Kavanaugh tells me that he and his staff have drawn a complete blank. They've checked out everything and everybody in Station 3 except Hoffman. I want you to get on Hoffman and push Kavanaugh on that Ainsley lead. That's the only one we've got, and we're not going to be able to control this thing very much longer. Yes, sir. Well, that film is going to arrive at Station 3 about 4 o'clock. Get it here as soon as it arrives. Right. Give me this number, will you, Ann? Now, you left the research center in Zurich after you accepted your position here. Is that correct? Yes, but as you know, I went on a four-week motor tour before I reported. You reported to Washington? Yes, well, actually, to the United States Council at Naples before I boarded the Da Vinci. And that was in? That was five months ago. The exact date was... Uh... Oh, I have it here. You were out of touch while touring. I had no set plans. I motored through the Tyrol, across the Brenner, Lake Lugano. Naturally, if I had been needed here immediately, it was a, um, it was kind of therapeutic irresponsibility. Lee, we just got the last word on Ainsley. Looks like we're on target. Excuse me. Mr. Barrett. Yes. That bulletin over the radio about the trouble in Florida, the, uh, it sounded as if we think it's the botulinus. My God. Why, Mr. Barrett? We don't know. But for what purpose? We're trying to find that out. Excuse me. He's disappeared. The Santa Barbara house and the Phoenix place have been closed for months. He was last seen in his New York place. How long ago was that? Eight months. We ran everybody who ever said hello to him through the ringer. His ex-housekeeper in New York said that he told her he was going on a world tour. Somebody bought the tickets. Travel agency must have a schedule. She said Ainsley is not the kind of man you ask questions of. Well, what does he look like? We have any pictures? Nope. 
There's no reason for anybody to keep a file on it. No pictures, newspaper morgue, no personal stuff? None. He's an eccentric. No pictures, no relatives, no public life. Visual description from all concerned. Age 50-something, height medium, hair brown, coloring normal. Distinguishing characteristics, none. No the leaves, nothing. No. If anybody could beat any haystacks any flatter than we have. Lee, look. He's the only name that's dropped into this from the outside. And he's vanished from the face of the earth. Everything we know about him fits the man that sent that telegram. Lunatic fringe, crank, rich with resources. Now, it's too much to be a coincidence. Barrett here. Thank you. The film's here. I thought something had happened when I didn't hear from you. What? I see. Everything's perfect here. What? Where? Where? Yes? Yes? Yes, we can. No doubt about it. Hey, Williams here. Thank you. Well, hello, sir. We're looking at the film now. Michelson said there's no question about it. Did they tell him everything? No, sir, I'm sorry, I can't. Not a thing. I understand. Bye. Well, they've had to give the press everything, except the connection with Station 3. Hello? Yes? Who is this? Who is this? All right, I'm listening. Go ahead. Who is this? Who is this? Now listen, don't hang up. I'll agree to meet you any way you say, but you must realize that we have to discuss what... Operator. Operator. A call just came through on this phone. Trace it. Why not? This is vitally important. Well, why is it impossible? I see. This number can be reached by an area code number. The call could have come from any place in the country. Take a week to track it down, if then. All right, I'm listening. Go ahead. You've seen what I've done in Florida. You have ignored my order. Continue, and you will sacrifice hundreds of thousands of innocent lives. Los Angeles next. No, tomorrow. Who is this? Who is this? I'll agree to meet you any way you say, but you must realize that we have to discuss with you. Operator. Operator. A call just came through on the
on this number. Trace it. We have to get every man in the country to find him. We're already doing that, but it's too late. He could be anywhere. And he has those flasks. Yes, I know that, General. And we can't evacuate Los Angeles. We don't have time. We'll have to try. Meanwhile, we'll keep stalling and hope for a break. Sir, don't you think we should capitulate? Station 3 will only be the beginning. It's a bluff. It must be. No one would do such a thing. Are you prepared to take that chance? Bring the tape recorder with you. There's no point in continuing the charade of hiding out here. Lee, I'd like to have you check out... What is it? Why did he give his name? It doesn't make any sense. It would have been better to keep us guessing. I don't agree. That's exactly what a paranoid would do. You heard that voice. A monstrous ego working. No, sir. There's something wrong. What? I can't put my finger on it. I don't really know. It'll be station three. I checked out the car for you, Lee. You got a flat coming down the canyon. Where? It was picked up about a half mile down the road. A couple hundred feet above Split Rock. You remember, we caught some trout there. You can still see the marks on the shoulder. See ya. What's the significance of the car, Lee? Nothing, just checking. You check everything. Flask? Well, the car slipped off the jack. Obviously, he tried to dig a hole, get it back on, and couldn't, so he abandoned it. Come on. All right, sit down here, Ann. Now, follow me on this. Everybody figures that whoever took the bugs got out. They're gone. The inside assist, Ostra, he's dead. But let's suppose that there's another man that's tied up in all this who's still here, who can't get out. Why does he have to get out? Why doesn't he just stay here? Because he's got something vital. Something that Ainsley has got to have and he's got to have in a hurry. I don't understand. Two men got into E-Lab. One got out as Baxter. He walked out. The other one threw the fence with the bugs. Let's say that they met this third man who took all the flasks, except two, which he gave to them. And then they took off, probably in Baxter's car. One flask for Florida, one for Los Angeles. I've got that. Now, let's say that this third man takes off with the rest of the flasks. But he's got one more thing that he must do, knock off Ostra, who's a threat somehow. Let's say he knocks off Ostra, comes down this road, free and clear, and then the nightmare of all criminals happens. The senseless accident. The flask. Right. Tries to fix it, the car slips off the jack, now he's stuck. What would you do? I'd hitchhike down the road. But the bugs. You couldn't take a chance on taking them with you, and you wouldn't leave them in the car. So where would you put them where they'd be safe, where you could get to them when you were free to, and where they'd stay cool? Water. I'd hide them in the water. That's what I think.
car was that? A stand. Perfectly still. Handle that gently. Those misses were intentional. Stand exactly where you are, man. And that, I presume, was Dr. Baxter? Just put the flask back in the box. Call for administration, Mr. Cavanaugh. Thank you. Absolutely no sign of them. We checked out Barrett's car. No sign of violence there or anywhere. Just some footprints down by the bank of the stream, nothing else. Have you heard anything here? No. He hasn't been missing long. He could be anywhere. You know what he's like, sir. I don't understand why Barrett is so interested in Dr. Hoffman's car. I don't either, sir. The highway patrol officer said... Yes? Mr. Cavanaugh, Johnson's on the line. Put him on. Hello? Yes, Johnson. And no sign of him any of the places we've looked in town. Keep looking. Yes, sir. The officer said that Barrett just wanted to know where the doctor had had the flat. Well, so what? We know about it. You had a flat last night. You started a hitchhike. They picked you up outside of town and brought you here. I was very lucky. That road is lonely at night. But I was picked up in the canyon, not outside of town. Yes. Well, Barrett is liable to call us any time from anywhere. I think it means nothing. I pulled all the roadblocks. Do you want me to put them back just in case? No point in that. Yes? There's a call for Dr. Hoffman. Put it through. Doctor? Dr. Hoffman? Yes? Hello, Gregor. This is Donald. Sorry to disturb you, but we were going fishing this afternoon, remember? Well, I, uh, I couldn't. I, I was tied up here. Sorry you missed out. Fishing was good. Do you have to work tonight? We're at your trailer. How about dinner? Well, Donald, I, I, I do not see how... Uh... I wish you could. There's something I want to talk to you about. Well, it, it would be very nice, Donald. There's no need for you to stay here now. Jack, run the doctor home. All right, all right. Thank you. I will be there in a few minutes, Donald. Good.
stopped on the road, slid down the bank, and got to the flats before we did. It's the only place we had to hide him. No, I was taking a chance to call you. I was afraid you were caught. He knew about your car. Now we're stuck. There are roadblocks all over the place. Everything is fine, Bob. Nobody is suspicious. And the roadblocks have been removed. It seems that Mr. Barrett is so unpredictable that nothing has been made of the disappearance. Did Los Angeles go as planned, Barretti? I put it there. They will take them with us. That's dangerous. If there is any trouble, they will be our best protection. There's nothing happening yet. They're still on the trailer. What about the manager? And we're keeping the manager out of the way. You think Barrett saw you? Possibly. Well, he's never recognized me. He's never seen me before. Can you see anything going on in there? There's no movement, no sound. No, nothing happening. Keep on the line. Why would Dr. Hoffman be connected with this? Why? I don't understand. He checked out perfectly. There is nothing in his background to indicate that he's... Dr. Michelson, please. We've got to grab them, sir. Right now. Certainly not, Cavanaugh. Well, we know that Barrett is in Dr. Hoffman's trailer with two strange men. And we know that Dr. Hoffman is there, and he's connected with those men. And we know Dr. Hoffman's car had some special significance to Barrett. And that's all we know. We don't even know if Barrett went there willingly or unwillingly. Let me grab them, sir, and I'll find out. I don't think you'll find out anything that would be worth losing the only advantage we have. What is that? They will lead us to Ainsley, to the flasks. Only the flasks are important. This is the break we've been praying for. They're going to leave. We let them. Then we shadow them very carefully. Let one eager beaver show our hand, and we're through. Now set it up. In the desert, we're OK. Not much traffic. But we could lose them in the first town. And what if they head for that mess that'll be coming out of Los Angeles? We'll change our strategy by then. At least we'll know which way they're headed. Set it up. Yes, sir. The evacuation of Los Angeles is underway. It's too early to say yet how effective this will be or how possible it will be. There is no further official word as to the exact imminence of the threat. It means nothing. There are military However, training fields all around here. The incident in Florida is related to the situation. I'm staying above and behind them. They're still traveling west on 17. They seem to be stalling. They're almost going around in circles. Why? Evasive action. They're taking the long way to wherever they're going. difficult to keep them in sight. This is a pretty rough country and it's closing in on the road. I don't like this section they're going through. It's impossible to keep visual contact without the chopper tipping its hand. There are only three points that can come out of there. Here, here, and here. You have men covering all of them, haven't you? Yes, sir. I'll double up here and here. They're going to lose them for a long stretch now. Unless I close in. Don't close up. Stay out of sight until you can pick them up on the other side of the section. Will do. Where's your follow car? Right here. Tell him not to move until he can make absolutely sure that the road ahead is clear. Yes, sir. Hold your position unless you can see the road is clear ahead. Understood.
better if we stay together. to be out in the open desert any minute. Back away to 11930 and stay out of sight. Right. Tell your follow how to close up. Zero to X-ray. Position ahead clear now. Move up. Understood. Moving up. the Seco Road now. They uh, slowed down and, well, for a moment we got awfully close to them. Did they see you? Well, I'm not sure. They might have. You want us to take them if they spot us? No. Only if they stop, and if they do, get on the radio immediately. Understood. Well, in up there. Let's see what this is. Zebra, come in. This is X-ray. Hello, Zebra. Come in. This is X-ray. Hello. Ah, it's dead. Come out and keep your hands up. Show yourself and keep your hands in the air. Come out and show yourself. We're armed with riot guns. Now come out of there with your hands up.
I dropped that gun. Tell them I'll throw it. Don't move. Just do exactly whatever he tells you to do. Toss the shotguns on the ground. Throw them down. Covering over one one niner three three zero. Nothing but empty road. Stay put. kind of a thing was that? Come in, 
This is Barry. Come in, X-ray. This is Zebra. Come in. This is Barry. Come in, X-ray. Come in. Los Angeles. Exactly. You cannot evacuate the city. If anything happens to me, Los Angeles will be a cemetery by this time tomorrow. If things go your way, and it's announced that Station 3 is being destroyed, will you take me to where the flask is and immobilize it? Perhaps you had better get in the car, Mr. Barr. On the other side. I determine in the laboratory that only a four and a half pound pressure shatters this flask. I can easily apply that. <laughs> Out of the station wagon again. They're still moving north on Seagull Road. Any sign of the follow car? No. Looks like there's a, some kind of fire back there where they came from. A lot of orange flame on the horizon. Better get somebody in there, fast. What are your plans now? What do you intend to do, Mr. Ainsley? I can't believe how stupid I've been. Ainsley's been missing for months, and Hoffman's been on the scene for months, or at least your impersonation of the real Hoffman. What happened to him? That's not hard to figure, Gregor Hoffman, living in Vienna, hide by Baxter from Austria. Did you kill him, or did you have him killed? You're no biochemist. How did you fool them? I am a biochemist, Mr. Barrett, of sorts. If you were more familiar with the name Ainsley, you'd know I made my fortune in patent medicines. Sometimes a little bit of knowledge goes a long way. The accent? Easy. I lived for years in Austria. Besides, Gregor Hoffman, though he lived an obscure life, was a world-famous chemist. You don't ask a famous chemist for formula for salt. But Austria did. You had everyone fooled but Austria. He knew you weren't the real Hoffman, so he died too. Found it surprisingly juvenile, Mr. Barrett. I believe that hundreds of people might have died in Florida. This afternoon when I was interrogating you, you heard Kavanaugh say that Ainsley was our man. Then you knew what to do. Somehow you made two telephone calls, one to your boys to pick up the flask where you had to leave them in the stream and the other to the general. So you could give us your ultimatum on Los Angeles, use the name C.R. Ainsley so he would drop the roadblocks and you could get out. And he fell for it. That's correct. I didn't make the telephone call somehow, Mr. Barrett. I made them from Station 3. As you're so fond of saying, there's no such thing as perfect security. <laughs> Don't try it, Mr. Barrett. You're lucky, but you're mortal. We all are. Tank vehicles carrying liquids, assembly point B. Ambulance section redesignated C. Repeat, ambulance section redesignated C. Control requests the following be read at five minute intervals an unidentified scientific research installation based in Southern California has ceased operation, it will be dismantled and cease to exist. End announcement. There he is. Who's 
there with him? Long story. Get out of the car, Doctor. Be careful. He's got a flask in his pocket. I'd hand it over, Doctor. Right now. The end of the line. This is one of 50 in recovery. What about the girl and the two other guys? No, no. Where's Kavanaugh? They could be anywhere. Out is on. We pick up office, stay off the radio, and don't say a word till we get them to station three. Long, he says. Did you ever hear a cop say anything else? It'll be ours. By that time, that mess from L.A. will hit us and we'll never move. Look at all those cans and busted beer bottles. You'd think people wouldn't throw things out there like that. Got a match? If you look at the jerk handling that tow truck, he's worse than the man that's driving the rig. <laughs> oh, boy, that's all we need. Sidewalk superintendent. Wise guy, huh? But what's happened to Barrett? Where's Hoffman? Dad? Dad? Dad, Lee's dead. They threw a flask. They threw a flask back at the gas station. What happened to Barrett? Where is he? clear out the area. He's at the station. Don't you understand that man, Veretti? He threw a flask. Sir. Where's the Satan bug? Hoffman took it. He changed cars and he went back the way we came from. What kind of car was it? It was a green Ford sedan. License? Oh, I don't know. I, I couldn't see it very clearly. It was FGA something seven, I think. Put it on the radio. Now, give me that stuff. Dad, you got to go back and clear out that area. That's all right, dear. That's all right. The flask is harmless now. The station burns. There's nothing to worry about. We found the bodies of Kavanaugh's men, but not Lee. But Lee was in the building. He was in the building. He's not there now. And Los Angeles. Did anyone say anything about Los Angeles? Anything? No, nothing. But everything you've got on Hoffman's car. Yes, sir. We're already on it. There are an awful lot of green Fords around. And there's nothing on these guys except this stuff. Guns, money, watches, phony driver's license, and keys. Maybe one of the keys fits something in Los Angeles. But how the hell do we check that?
sounds like the ignition. of yours posing as cabin oars men, did you? Okay, I've got the gun now. Put the bottle down. Step away from it before that copter of yours settles down. You haven't given me any reason why I won't smash this. This is the end of the line, Ainsley. For real now. Put the bottle down and step away from it or I'll blow a hole in your head. You're psychotic, but don't be stupid. If I blow a hole in your head or you drop that bottle, you'll die and you'll have nothing. Perhaps I am psychotic, but I'm certainly not stupid. If I smash this, I wouldn't die, Mr. Barrett. Why do you think Baxter waited so long before telling anyone about the Satan buck? What do you think he was working nights, weekends, the vaccine? Well, I waited for the vaccine. Two days ago, he made it. That's why he had to die. And Austria. You're wrong about him, too. He didn't suspect me. He didn't suspect anyone. He just knew about the vaccine. And now I'm the only one who has the formula. And the vaccine is in my bloodstream. I'm immune. I won't die. I'm immune. But you told us what the Satan bug would do. You mean to say that you'd live on this world alone? By yourself? I told you about the Satan bug to keep you from finding Baxter. Even so, he believed every word I said. But I'm not sure how good a biochemist he was. Some scientists thought that the H-bomb would start a chain reaction, that it'd blow up the world. But it didn't. But nobody really knows about this. Theoretically, yes. But it hasn't yet been put to the real test. Perhaps it will destroy all life. Perhaps. Certainly. It could destroy millions. You want to test it? Mr. Ainsley? Yes. I was watching for you and saw the car stop. Probably better pick you up here. The engine failed. Don't worry about it. We'll take off immediately. Yes, sir. Any trouble, Mr. Ainsley? No, no. Well, Mr. Barrett, the flask is still in Los Angeles. Jack, take this. Well, they found the green car. Where? 
It was abandoned in front of a restaurant next to a service station near Palmdale. They were both closed, but a watchman in a gravel yard across the street saw the green car park and two men get out. He described Hoffman perfectly. The other man? It sounds like Barrett. Well, what happened to them? There were two other men waiting in a black car. They held guns on the first two. Then they got in the black car and all four drove off. Did the night watchman try to stop them? No. There's something else. The watchman said one of the men was carrying something that looked like a small flask. No license plate on the black car. Wrong angle. Couldn't see it. Eric? This was doodled by that maniac Beretti. Look at this. That could be a flask. It is a flask. I think all these are flasks. And that is something real. He was unconsciously trying to draw or doodle something. What is it? Those lines look like parking dividers in a parking lot. Sir, look at this. A diamond? Baseball diamond? Ball Stadium. Jack, give me that. Put me on Los Angeles, 4 7, right away. Visited Mr. Barrett. And pathetic. They can't run away. Nobody can. There's plenty of time. Hello. Yes, we're here in Loki. Nothing. Yes, they're looking there. Of course we're looking there. Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll be running out of land pretty soon. And time. Where is the flask, Mr. Ainsley? Don't press, Mr. Barrett.
No, sir. We're on 113.6 Los Angeles Radio. They should be on this setting if they're trying to contact us. Hold that. That cap is fulminate of mercury, so don't drop it. Sometimes you're booby-trapped. Yeah. Cut the wires and... Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, don't anybody move a muscle until we get this thing collected. For Catalina, you don't have any intentions of going where the flask is, do you? As much as you have is destroying Station 3. That's not very clear thinking, Ainsley. If you intend to take Los Angeles, I'll take you. I've got nothing to lose. Except this. I see. He takes you to a yacht, and tomorrow you get on a mic and you dictate your terms. That's right. You become everything, everyone else nothing. And then? Then? First time in the world. What are your plans for the world, Ainsley? War, peace, back to the Middle Ages, forward to the future? Doesn't make any difference what you choose because it all means one thing to you, power. Power for its own sake. <laughs> Tell the boys to be on the lookout for me. I'm a little rusty at these things. We'll meet you there, Lee. Take it nice and easy, and for God's sake, make a good landing. I'll put down safely, and I'll give you the flask. And we're right back where we started. Mm -hmm. 